We begin today's episode of the Fade Route with a little bit of breaking news. Uh, During the parade today in Kansas City, celebrating the champions of the 2023 season, there was a shooting. Um, Shooting that sent more than two dozen people to the hospital and between 11 to 15 of those people being children. Uh, So far, we have one reported death, Um, but it sounds like the children that were injured are going to recover. Uh, You know, not not the way we expected to start the show today and uh, also um, not something we thought could possibly happen during a parade celebrating a championship in Kansas City. Uh, You know, it's... These things are never taken lightly. It just seems like this has become part of our regularly scheduled days here in America where there's a mass shooting. Someone shows up to a parade, someone shows up to a church, someone shows up to a supermarket. In this case, it sounds like it was two individuals that have been detained as suspects. Um, But I mean, anytime you go anywhere today in America, you take your life into your hands. Um, that's just, it's a shame, Z. It's really just a shame what happened today. I want everybody to think about these 30 victims. When they woke up this morning, they were on top of the world. Their team just won the Super Bowl. They were about to go celebrate maybe have one too many beers and praise the team that brings them joy right I want you guys to think about that think about any moment in your life where you were excited to go someplace right whether it was your graduation from high school or college whether you got tickets to the Super Bowl or I think back a couple years ago my fiance my stepson and I like we were still we were just dating at the time but still we went to the NYCFC championship parade anything you look forward to you now need to start thinking about and take serious pause am I going to make it home that's where we are right now we have kids who are scared to go to school we have people who are scared to go to work we have people that are scared to go to sporting events we have people who are scared to go to concerts we have people who are scared to go to parades I mean, next month we have the St. Patrick's Day Parade, right? Like, in New York City. Like, that's big. Sitting ducks, right? People who go there, you're sitting ducks. At no point did it cross their mind when they woke up this morning that this could be it. But for one person, it was. It was senseless. It was cowardly. And and frankly, it's inexcusable. Too many people are affected by gun violence in this country. And RG3 said it best, it's not a political issue. It's not. People in general, people, not Democrats, not Republicans, not conservatives, not liberals, not black, not white, not gay, not straight, doesn't matter. Human beings, Americans, are disproportionately affected by gun violence. 
And what are we going to do to stop this? Is the question. I don't want to hear political rhetoric. I don't want to hear thoughts and prayers. Well, thoughts and prayers are nice. That's wonderful. However, it's not a solution. What's the solution? How many more people need to die? How many more people need to be scared to leave their home? How many people, how many innocent children need to be taken to the hospital with gunshot wounds before we take this seriously? And you know what? Like, you're a parent. I'm a step parent, I'm a father figure. I'm a teacher. Like, that's that's real, right? Parents entrust their children to me on a daily basis. It's something I take very seriously. And we do it all the time. We do lockdown drills. We do duck and cover drills. We, we do these drills that we never thought possible when we were growing up, right? We had the fire, we had a fire drill. That was it. Right. Right. And now, now you have to be worried about what you're going to do if somebody comes into the room with an assault rifle. What, What world are we living in, man? And to think that you can't even go celebrate your favorite team's victory it's just it's I just don't I don't know where we go you know you you like to think eventually you hit bottom and then you start turning up but I don't see it man I don't see where we hit the bottom and we realize that we really need to make change. I don't know. I, I think whether it's the gun lobby being too powerful, the NRA being too power. I don't. I don't know. I don't know. But I think we can all agree that change needs to be made. But it's a credit to. Like, it's a credit to the people who acted, right? So, the cops, there were over 650 cops there. You had innocent bystanders tackling one of the perpetrators. Like, they're the real heroes, right? Like, they put themselves in harm's way, possibly getting shot. They risk getting shot, getting killed to tackle this guy. And they set him up for the cops. They set him up so that the cops can can bring him in. So kudos to those people. They will go unheralded. But it is definitely like it is something that you need to take into account. And it's the actions of those everyday heroes that make all the difference. But where, where do we go, man? Like, where do we go? Like, what do we do? Like, yeah. as, as a father, like, as a father, how, like, put, you know, like, I'm, I'm sure that you can empathize with this, you know? Like, what, what do you do? Like, would you take your, your, like, are you having second thoughts taking your kids to, to sporting events now? I do. I do. I have second thoughts of taking my children anywhere, honestly. Um, I have second thoughts of dropping them off on religion classes on Sunday because they're just, they're not equipped to handle someone coming in there and doing something. Um, as terrible as that sounds, but that's just the truth. You know, we're, we're fortunate that we live in a town where we actually have a, a, a police officer that roams from campus to campus, you know, so, you know, not a, not a security guard, but an actual police officer because that's what you need. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's sad, but it's the things like, you know, you kiss them before they go to bed, you kiss them before they go to school. Cause you just don't know. You don't yeah. know. And my fiance brought this to my attention and it slipped my mind, but this is the six year anniversary of the Parkland shooting. 
Mm-hmm. Mar- you know, Stone Douglas High, February right. 14th. So right. we said never again. We said never again then. Well, never came again. Never came too soon. Yeah. But, you know, you just hope that one day people will kind of get their their minds right. No, here. it's just going to keep getting worse. It's just going to keep getting worse. There's nothing that's going to slow it down. You know, you have these people that, um, you know, you can, you can put all the gun laws into effect that you want, but you can't stop bad people from getting guns. If a bad person wants a gun, they're going to get a gun. It's the good citizens like you and I that struggle to get a firearm. But, you know, if you're a bad person and you want to do bad things, you're not going to have trouble getting a gun. You know, so, you know, and they're, they're never, they're never going to outlaw firearms. And I'm not saying they should. I just don't know how to solve the problem. You can have background checks. You can put all this stuff into play, but you know, someone takes it upon themselves to do something on a bad day. <laughs> You're not gonna be able to stop them. And more and more, I'm sure we're gonna find more and more of the motivations for these perpetrators, right? Whether it's political, whether it's racial, whether it's you know, I, we I, don't know. We're well, the only thing I'm gonna say about that is, is like. I think it it all comes down to mental health, right? It's like a person that's going to say, oh, it's because they're of this religion. It's, that's just, you, you have a mental problem to say something like that. You know, oh, a person that says, oh, it's because, you know, there are people of this uh, ethnic background. It's like, well, that's that's not a normal thing to think. You know, that's not that's not the right frame of mind. So it all, I think it all comes down to mental issues. It all, that's where it all stems from. You know, whether they're psychologically imbalanced or something happened to them when they were children or they just, they've always had this problem that people have never, you know, they've never been treated for. You know, it's a big mental health issue in this country. And if it's not treated, this is what can happen. I mean, it's part, it's one of the reasons for sure. I mean, you, you definitely have your fair share. Anybody who opens fire on children has a mental problem. Or they're just evil. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's just evil. It's right. Just, I'm sorry. Right. That's... And there's no there's no solution for that. You know, it's holy water doesn't work. No, <laughs> it's, the, it's the embodiment of evil, man. Yeah. Like that's for you to to shoot a kid. Children. There's a special place in hell for somebody like that. Yeah. And you know, it's a, it's access. Does I understand the Second Amendment? I, I get it. I, I get it. But does that mean that you have the right to have an AR-15 assault rifle? Like, do you need an AR? Does a hunter need an AR-15 assault rifle? Does no, a, but if somebody wants to get one, they're going to get one. That's the that's the thing, though. AR-15 assault rifles are illegal in New York. Six months ago, they arrested a guy not far from my house who had seven of them. <laughs> like what? That's that's insane. That's insane. <laughs> it's, it's, and why did he get him? Because he wanted them. Huh. And you know, and they, that, he didn't that, do anything that, wrong. He they just found them in his house. They were something happened at his home, and they wound up searching his home, and they found them. He didn't do anything wrong. You, you can't have that. <laughs> that's a that's no. a felony. Yeah. Each one carries seven years in prison. Well, there you go. I mean, it's a start. It's definitely a start. I'm even just trying to say this is a case where, you know. If he got older and up in age and, and he starts getting senile or he starts, you know, uh, his mental capacity take goes downward, guess what? <laughs> guess what? I mean, no, you know, I mean it, it certainly could happen or, you know, victims of breaking. Or someone could rob his house and get a hole right. in him, right? Yeah. That's the other thing that could happen, right? They yeah. find out he has one somehow. They make a plan and a mission to go in there and get it. That's yeah. what I'm saying. It's, it's hard to prevent it from getting into the wrong hands. It's hard to prevent people who have it from bad things happening. No. We we can't prevent these things from happening. And we can't legislate these things. We clearly can't legislate these things from happening. So, I mean, 
I don't know. Like uh, until people that are smarter than us come up with ways to to curb this. You know, in other countries they have gun buybacks and they have these things, and you know, like that works in smaller countries. Does that you know? That, would it work here? Don't know. You know, it's like the idea of universal health care. Like, it, just because it works in a small country doesn't mean it necesarily work here. But, you, yeah, try. But, you know, again, it's one of those things that is kind of beyond us. Because at the end of the day, like, we can only make the decisions in our micro environments. And we choose to be good people. We choose to be positive role models for our kids and the kids that are put in our in our charge so you know it's an absolute tragedy what happened today thankfully the kids are going to be okay you know but are they going to be okay physically maybe but not mentally, not, not psychologically. That that's a scar that that's a scar that doesn't you know that doesn't show. That's a scar that doesn't heal, and it's just more victims, more unnecessary victims. But we'll be back with our regular schedule episode of the fade route with dnz tomorrow and thank you for listening and thank you for giving us the time to speak on this and to those of you affected by gun violence to those of you who were affected by what happened today we just want to issue an apology on behalf of the perpetrators We hope that you're able to recover completely.